Good morning. Welcome for another episode of the Sacred Roots podcast. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different because this week is my birthday. This week I'm going to be turning 35. And so I thought this was actually the perfect opportunity to go mm, a little bit more personal and actually tell you a little bit more about my life lessons, my mystery teachings, because as you know, the mystery is you, the mystery is me, we are the mystery, the mystery is inside of us. And my life has taught me some pretty deep lessons that really helped me shift things, be more in my power, be more authentic, be more happy, be more at peace. And so I wanted to share those lessons with you. Because I mean, really, in the end, what are we all seeking if it isn't peace, abundance, joy, connection, right? That's really all that we desire in life. And these lessons really made a huge difference for me. Um, at first, I thought I was going to record 35 lessons for my 35th birthday. And then I thought, come on, who is going to listen to 35 lessons? <laughs> That's a lot of lessons, and I'm sure I could find those but I don't want to overwhelm you and give you too much information. So I have decided to keep it simple to the number eight because the number eight is uh, one of the numbers of the divine feminine. And so, of course, I chose that number. Um, and my advice would be to keep one of those. If there's one that's really resonating with you, keep it and apply it to your life. Ask yourself, what does it mean for my life? And this thing that Eli is talking about, how could it make a difference for me? How could this be helping me and guiding me in what I'm going through right now? So here we go. Sit down, go for a walk, make yourself a cup of tea because we're going to have a really nice and personal chat because I'm going to be sharing some more personal stories with you. So life lesson number one, it's your life. This might sound really obvious, but the day I realized it was my life that I was living and not anyone else's made a big difference for me. Because, you know, we grow up going to school, to university, people pleasing, trying to be who we think we have to be, trying to follow our parents' advice, our friends' advice, our teachers' advice, and being what society is telling us to be. And one morning, I think I was pretty young when I realized that, I was like, no, it's actually my life. And so if I do things because I think that's what's expected of me and it doesn't suit me, I'm the only one to know that. I'm the only one to know because I feel it in my body, I feel it in my heart, if what I do is actually right for me. People can tell me what to do and maybe it worked for them and that's why they're telling me what I should be doing. But they're not me. They don't have my history, my wisdom, my genius, my weaknesses, my fears, my traumas. How can people actually know what's right for you? Actually, they don't. Even your parents don't. And that's also a beautiful lesson to remember as parents, because I'm a mother now, as you probably know. And I keep reminding myself that I'm here to support Benjamin, but it's his life. And he's the, he's the only one that knows what's right for him. And so it's a very important lesson. And that's why I chose it as the number one. Because I think that when you realize that it's your life and that you're the only one who knows what's best for you, what's right for you, that's when your real life begins. That's when you start to make choices differently. That's when you start to go within and actually ask yourself, is this right for me? Maybe everyone's telling me I'm crazy, but I do know. That's when you actually realize that you have to learn to listen 
to what's happening inside of you. And not just listen, but also trust. And that's also when you start to make different choices. And that can be scary. Because then you're not trying to fit in anymore. And you have other people criticize you. But that's really when you start to find much more happiness, much more satisfaction, much more playfulness and joy in your life. Because you're building your life from the inside out instead of the outside in, instead of what the movies are telling you, the books are telling you, the parents, society. And it's the foundation of everything. That's why it's life lesson number one. And so, of course, this leads to life lesson number two and three, actually, because once you start to realize that it's your life and not everybody else's, and you are unique, so your life is supposed to be unique, after the excitement of realizing that you are the one that decides, also comes fear. Because you're going to be making different choices. Because you're going to be showing up differently. Because you're going to choose. Yeah, you're going to choose to be more authentic. And that leads to lesson number two, which is fear only is expansion. And that is a really big, big, big lesson. Because we all have fears. And it's normal. We need fear. Fear has been very, very useful in our life. And fear comes from our ego that is doing its best to keep us safe. But fear is also keeping us stuck in the comfort zone, to the, in, in the zone that we know, with the people that we know, with the job that we know, with the habits that we know, even if they are uncomfortable, some of these habits, and we want to change them. Sometimes it's scary. Because everything that is unknown, everything that is different, everything that is new, is scary to your ego, to a part of you. The truth is that if you do it anyway, if you do what scares you, you are going to expand. You are going to grow. You are getting out of your comfort zone. So you are learning to be comfortable with something that you weren't comfortable with before. So that's why it scared you, because you weren't sure if you were going to make it. But in the end, you do it, you learn, you fall, you get back up, and you expand. And so fear actually means that there is expansion. Fear is expansion. That's the only thing that you have to remember. And so when you feel fear, it means you should do it. Because your soul wants you to expand. Your soul wants you to grow. And if you want to build your life on your own terms and have a life that is aligned for you, you are going to feel fear because you are going to have to expand from what already exists, from the life that society has put you in. So the easier the... Um, the fastest you can learn that fear is actually a sign that you're going in the right direction, that you are expanding, the easier your life is going to get. And the fastest you're actually going to build the life that you're supposed to build for yourself. And I know it can be really hard because we feel that fear. It's so present. We feel that we're going to completely mess our life up, that this decision is going to destroy everything, that it's a huge risk, that we could potentially die or end up alone and hated by everyone. And that fear is very, very present in our body. Also because very often fear does not come only from this lifetime. We can have fears that come from past lifetimes. And these are very intense. The truth is that it really means that you are about to expand. And if you cannot go through the fear on your own, get support. Talk to a friend, find a coach, find a healer, a therapist, a counselor, and understand what this fear is actually protecting you from. 
and remind yourself that you're safe, that you're more than protected. Fear was actually very useful for us when we were children and we needed to stay alive and be afraid of cars. And actually, when you think about it, kids are not afraid of anything. So fear is really something that we are taught for our own safety, like our physical safety. But the truth is that um, it starts to be a physical, emotional, mental, spiritual fear that is just keeping us stuck in the end. So please never give your power to fear because that is keeping you small. That is keeping you stuck. And in the end, it is not going to make you happy. It is not going to make you be fulfilled. It is not going to give you that satisfaction, that joy, that excitement that you're actually desiring for your life. And so learn to tame your fear, to love it, to nourish it, because it's just trying to keep you safe but to do it anyway, because it really means that there's expansion on the other side. So if you're afraid of something right now, maybe it's to travel, maybe it's to say to someone that you love them, maybe it's to do a course or to change jobs. If you're afraid of something right now, give yourself the compassion and the healing you need, but do it anyway. Because there's a part of you, your higher self, that is really craving for that expansion. So feel the fear and do it anyway. My third life lesson, which is also connected to the second and the first one, is around people's judgment. And I see that that is something that is keeping a lot of people stuck. Um, to be honest, I've never been really receptive to people's judgment. I've always been someone that never really cared of what people would think about me. Of course I did. And I'm still releasing some layers of that. But on average, when I was a teenager, my friends would always say, it's unbelievable, unbelievable how little you care of what other people think. And I think it's because I very quickly understood that people were projecting their own stuff on you. And sometimes, you know, even if my nature was to be pretty carefree about other people's judgments, to be honest, I've been really hurt by what other people think or other people have told me. But it's not their fault. It's because a part of me actually believed what they said. And so when people judge you, there are really two things to, to do to let go of that judgment and be able to live in a more carefree way. The first one is to understand that people are actually really just judging themselves when they're judging you. We are mirrors for each other. Especially if you have a line five in your human design, a nine a tree five, you'll see that people project a lot of their stuff on you. And we just have to accept that. We are an opportunity for each other to heal, to see ourselves and to let go of what doesn't serve us. And so if people call you names, act like a child. Children have so much wisdom. You know, when children are at the playground and they say, oh, you're dumb or you can play football or da 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 da. Children would always respond, oh, it's the one who says it. Who is it? Right In French, we have this expression, c'est celui qui le dit, qui l'est. It's the one who says it. Who is it? So children know that we are just mirrors for each other. We criticize others for things that we actually do ourselves. If someone criticized you recently, go and have a look at their life. Because what they are criticizing you about is probably something that they're doing themselves. Find that truth and it will set you free. And then even if you find that truth, but it's still hurting you, ask yourself, is there a part of me that is actually believing this? Is there a truth in what that person is saying? And if there is truth, it's an opportunity for you to change that truth or to make peace with it and to accept it. And if there's no truth in there, then you can really release it. And allowing you to be completely free from people's judgments is going to help you build your 
life and be in your power and your most authentic self even more than if you still try to do things to please others. Because if you're afraid of people's judgments, it's going to lead you to people pleasing, to, you know, not doing certain things and really being, being stuck. So the fastest, again, you can understand that people judging you are only judging themselves. The fastest you're going to free yourself, really. And I'm pretty sure you knew this one, but I am repeating it because there's a very big difference between knowing something and embodying something. Knowing is not enough. You have to live that truth. Let go of people's judgments. Don't be attached to it. Who cares? You are a healing opportunity for them. You're an opportunity for them to see themselves. If you do, or if you say something and your intention is pure and honest and you're in integrity with who you are, who cares about what people say? Now, if your intention is, of course, to provoke or to hurt people and then people judge you, well, of course, don't be surprised that they do it. You might ask yourself, why did I do that? Why am I provocative? Why am I trying to hurt people? But if you do things with pure intentions, with love and integrity with, with who you are, let go of people's judgments. Gift yourself that freedom. Life lesson number four. You don't find your purpose. You become more of yourself. Your purpose is actually not something that you came here to do. Your purpose is who you are. It's who you came here to be. There's a huge misunderstanding around that because we are human beings. We are not human doings. I know our society is all around doing and you even might be comfortable not to do anything because there's a guilt around it or that's when all your emotions are coming up and so it's uncomfortable. But really, we are human beings. So we came here to be, to evolve, to grow through the pressure that life is naturally putting on us to evolve. And the more you allow yourself to be yourself, the more you step into your purpose, who you came here to be. And because we are human beings that are constantly evolving, it's not so much about, oh, I found my purpose and this is it. Because your purpose is going to evolve, just as you. You're evolving, so is your purpose. You don't find your purpose. It's not like a paper that's hidden in a tree that you're climbing to get, and then it's written on the paper, this is who you came here to be. No. You just uncover more and more layers of who you are. You come back to your essence. And then you see what that essence is desiring to create. And then you can do certain things around that and with that, with that beingness. But so many people are, you know, seeking meaning in their life, seeking direction, looking for their purpose. What am I here to do? And I get it. I've been there for a while. But the truth is that there is no purpose to find. There is just more of yourself to become and to express. And so if you can see this as a game, because life is a game, life is a school, really. And if you can see your search, your quest as a game of, I'm trying this oh, this is actually fun. I like it. Okay, I keep it in my toolbox. I'm trying something else. Oh no, I don't really like it. Then you let it go. And life, the goddess, the great mother, the universe, call it the way you want, is of course incredibly smart because there, there are tools that can help you, aka find that purpose and become more of yourself. 
and the tools, there are really two tools that are here that I want to share with you. The first one is around the energy that it gives you and the joy that it gives you. I was having this conversation with a friend uh, a few days ago. And when he's, he's a musician, an artist, really great guy. We've been friends for 15 years. And he was sharing with me, um, you know, when I give guitar classes, I'm actually exhausted because even though I seem to be super social and I'm always in the spotlight and noisy, I'm actually an introvert. And when I give guitar classes to others, it exhausts me. I'm really happy because I see them evolve, but I feel drained. And I was like, hmm, interesting, because you would have thought that as a music lover, that was your path, right? I was like, yeah, for sure. And that's what I thought for a while until I realized it was just not sustainable. Well, that's actually done on purpose. If you're doing something and it drains you, it burns you out, it exhausts you, it's because it's not meant for you. He was then sharing with me that he started to record music. He bought an amazing music program and he started to create his own music. And he would just be on his own behind his laptop with his guitar in the dark or in the light. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Actually, you're more creative in the dark, but that's a story for another day. Um, and that would give him a lot of energy. He could do that for hours without seeing the time go by. He would feel super energized and super joyful. So one of the tools that you can connect with your most authentic self and express more of who you are really, express your essence, find that AKA purpose, it's by following the joy and doing what gives you energy. When I record these podcasts for you guys, or when I write books, or when I teach and I'm on certain coaching sessions, I have way more energy after than I did at the beginning. Because it's who I am. It's who I came here to be. I love it. I'm having a lot of fun. I'm sure you've noticed because I laugh. <laughs> and I'm just being myself. And I'm not hiding anything. But also it gives me energy. I am more energized after recording a podcast or coaching you or writing my books or creating teachings for you than I am before. And so that gives you a great insight on who you came here to be. Because that's a little 4B lesson. Life is not supposed to be boring. Life is supposed to be joyful. Life's supposed to be playful. You're supposed to have limitless energy. And so if you allow yourself to do the things that give you that energy, you're going to find your purpose. And remember, it's your life, not everyone else's, anyone else's. So do what brings you joy and gives you energy. Because life is, life is fun. Life is pure magic. Of course, it comes with ups and downs and challenges. But these are healing and growing opportunities. A little 4C life lesson. But I'm not going to dive into that one today. All right. Life lesson number five. So I've already said that it's your life. And you're the only one that knows what's best for you. Number two, fear only means expansion. Three, people judging you are only judging themselves. Let go of people's judgments. Number four, you don't find your purpose. You become more of who you are, more of yourself. I would love to know which of these four lessons has been resonating with you so far and is hitting home more than another and helping you on your path. So you can share that on social media, on Instagram with me. You can tag me at Elie Poisson or sacredroots.podcast because I would love to hear how this is landing for you. Before I actually start the four other lessons, which for me are even bigger lessons. Um, those first four were 
pretty mainstream life lessons, but really made a huge difference for me. Like I said, it's not just about knowing them. It's about embodying them and living those truths. And when you actually really live them, it really makes a huge difference in your life and how you're feeling. Um, but I'm sure you've already heard those. Now I'm going to get into four other lessons that are more personal and that are really part of my true values, I would say. Really made a huge difference for me. So life lesson number five. Accept what is without giving it meaning. And that's a really big one. Because we don't accept a lot of what is. We don't accept ourselves. We don't accept others, other people's behavior. And if you can accept what is without giving it meaning about who you are, who those people are, if they love you or not, you are going to save yourself a lot of energy, a lot of frustration, a lot of tears, a lot of pain. Because this life lesson, this concept can go really, really far because we give meaning to everything. Oh, this person didn't invite me for a dinner. They are being impolite. They don't like me. Oh, this person didn't buy my program or my course. Um, it means I'm not good enough. Oh, I released this podcast episode. I only have 10 downloads. It means I'm not successful. Stop giving meaning to what people do. People are busy. People have their own battles you have no idea about. People have their own traumas, their own fears. Maybe they're not allowing themselves to live their own life like you are now, since you've understood life lesson number one. <laughs> Just accept what is. Accept that your mother is not the way you want her to be. Accept that your sister is controlling, fearful, that she worries all the time. Accept that your father is distracted, clumsy, or bossy. Accept people for who they are. People are always showing you who they are. Very often, we don't want to see them or we don't want to accept it, or we wish we were, they were different. But if you actually take a step back in your life and you observe people's behavior, they are showing you who they are. If you don't give it any meaning about who you are and your worth, it is not going to hurt you. But you can also choose all right, this is how they are choosing to behave. This is how they are choosing to manage their relationship. This is the amount of energy that they are putting in our relationship, in our intimacy, in our bond. I accept it for what it is. But that doesn't mean that you have to say, I'm going to keep giving my 100%. I'm going to accept it and just give the same of what I would do before. It means I'm making peace with it, but I'm also setting my boundaries. Because you can say it's not okay with me. I'm accepting you. This is your behavior. This is who you are. This is who you're choosing to be. I am seeing it and observing it. I'm accepting it, but I'm gone. Because that's not what I want in my life. Or that's not what I deserve. Accepting doesn't mean uh, being okay with it. There's a very big difference between accepting and being okay with it. Accepting means recognizing, acknowledging, and not resisting. Accepting means welcoming. But then you can say, I accept that this is who you are. I accept that this is how you behave. But this is not what I desire for my life. 
So I'm gone. In my relationships, it's been a really long journey for me. This. I had a really, really close friend that, um, yeah, we were like almost best friends. And I would usually be the one sending him texts so that we would see each other, go out, spend time together. But when he had something better to do or a girl to date or something going on in his life, he wouldn't respond to my text. And then something would happen with this girl or situation. And then he'd call me because I always had some words of wisdom to share. And I'd be like, his psychologist or like his sister or like his mom. And at some point I got tired of that imbalance in the relationship. And even though I loved him really, really deeply, I decided to set some distance because I had to accept that this was who he was choosing to be, that that was his truth. So I accepted that this was who he was choosing to be. This was him. That was his choice, his priorities, his behavior. And that even though I loved him dearly as a great friend, it was not what I wanted for my relationships. And so I, I let him go with all the love and appreciation and gratitude that I have for him and his relationship. It taught me to set boundaries and to ask for more balance, respect, and sacred reciprocity in my relationships. And so by accepting him for who he was, I could simply make peace with the situation and then choose, is this right for me or not? Do I still give it my 100% or do I make peace with it and just give it 50%? And you'll see that if you prioritize your needs and you give your 5, 10 or 20% because you think that's what the relationship deserves, it's going to be much easier for you to just accept what is. Because there are some people that we still have to see in our lives that we are still connected to that we can't just stop seeing. And the truth is that if you completely reject people, you're actually also rejecting a part of yourself. Because remember when I said life lesson number three, people judging you are only judging themselves. When you judge others, you are actually judging a part of yourself. So pushing people away is not a solution either. It's not a solution. It's just going to hurt you more. So recognize your relationships for what they are. Accept what is. Without giving a meaning about who you are, about your worth. Make peace with it, but then choose the energy exchange that is fair for you. What are you willing to give to that relationship if this is what you are receiving? Where are those boundaries? What is fair for you? What is healthy for you? I mean, I, can, I could talk about this point for like a lot more, um, but I'm going to let this sink in because it's, um, it's a really big one. And if you really not just understand this truth, but bring it into your life and make the necessary changes in your life and in your relationships, it is going to save you a lot of energy, a lot of frustration. Because you're going to stop saying, oh, she should behave like this. He should have done this. He should have said this. Just accept people. People are not trying to be someone they're not. People are showing you who they are all the time. Make peace with it, but then choose from your side how much you give those people if this is what you're receiving from them. And that will set you free. 
Life lesson number six. True power lies in allowing life. True power lies in allowing life. What do I mean with this? You know, in my work, I'm all about women's empowerment. You know that. That's why you're listening to me because I'm helping you with all these life lessons. And I'm there to, yeah, empower you, help you connect with your power. But what is that power? It's a real question. What is power? Yes, it's being in your genius. Yes, it's expressing more of who you are. Yes, it's about learning to say no. Honoring who you are, your boundaries, your desires, your needs. Being connected to your intuition. Honoring your cycles. Slowing down when you have to. Taking action when you feel called to. All that is about being in your power. And that's definitely the beginning of the journey when you reclaim your power. But we are co-creators. And if you're following me, I'm sure you are spiritual, very spiritual or open to spirituality. So you are aware and you might have observed in your life that there is a greater power. And you can call it the way you want. You can call it nature. You can call it life. You can call it the goddess. You might hate the word God or goddess because it's been used and overused. You can call it Mother Earth. It doesn't really matter how you call it. Just use the words you like. Maybe you call it your spirit guides. But that power is the power that created the planets and is making them turn 600 miles an hour around the sun. That power is immense. And that power is your co-creator. Is creating life with you and also created you. When you were just a little tiny cell in the womb of your mother, there's an intelligence, a wisdom, a creative force that created you, cell after cell. And it created you in a perfect, astonishing, amazingly beautiful way. That power is immense. And your true power lies in allowing that power to move through you, to do its magic, to be present in your life, not to fight against it, but to surrender to it, to welcome it. And when you connect with that power, it can be overwhelming because suddenly you realize how big it is. And I've had a very interesting experience. A few days ago, a few weeks ago, I was hosting a cacao ceremony at home at my mother's place with all my previous Belgian co-creators, my clients that I had worked with. And I do a lot of my work online. So I really wanted to meet them in person. And I thought, oh, it's going to be great. We're going to gather. We're going to do a women's circle, have some cacao, drop in our hearts, drop in our rooms, and have a moment of true connection. And that was my intention for the afternoon that we spent together. And I was blown away by the magic that happened that day. I was blown away by the tears that were rolling down the cheeks, the connections that were happening, the kind words, the support that was going from one woman to another, two girls that decided, oh, we're going to go and meet and scream together in the forest because they wanted to heal together, holding hands. Another one crying because she felt at home in that circle of sisterhood 
she felt seen like never before. Another one that was overwhelmed because she received clarity on who she came here to be and the work that she was going to do in the next months. I was blown away by the power of the experiences that these women had in those few hours that we spent together. And they were all thanking me so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eli. This was so wonderful. This was pure magic. This was a moment out of time. And I had to humbly say, well, thank you so much for your gratitude, but I didn't do anything. I just brought you guys together. Yes, okay, I created a safe space and I made sure you were all comfortable. But you did it. You dropped into your heart. You opened yourself to receive each other, to see each other. And we all, all of us, the 10 of us, we allowed that greater power to journey with us that afternoon, to work through each of us. And that's why this afternoon was so powerful. And I was, to be honest, I was overwhelmed for a few hours after that. I was like, oh my God. But then I remembered, it's not me. It's the magic of life. It's the power of the goddess. And when you bring women together and they slow, they slow down and they drop in their hearts, you touch that immense power. And so your true power really lies in allowing life to do its magic, to work through you. And so first you have to honor who you are and really own who you are unapologetically for sure. But then you also have to come back to the humility that you are only a co-creator. Yes, you create your life. And you have lots of power in there because the divine is also you, but you're co-creating. And when you allow your co-creator to take the lead, you're going to be blown away by what happens in your life. I have so many stories. And the more I witness that power, the more I witness that I'm a co-creator, the more I only take action when the co-creator is telling me this is the right thing to do. And so I'm inspired and I'm excited and I follow my joy and my energy. The more I am blown away. And this leads to life lesson number seven, which is that it's important to stay humble because we don't know shit. <laughs> I don't swear really often on this podcast because I guess it's not really my style to start with, especially not in like another language that's not your mother tongue. <laughs> but I do think that the word is appropriate here. We have no idea. We think we know. And our egos like to think we know. But it's important to stay humble because we don't know shit. We have no idea about humans, about life, about the universe, about climate change, about the economy, about politics. Well, first of all, so many things are hidden from us. And then second of all, so many things happen in the unseen. The human eye only sees 2% of reality. And I'm not, I'm not just coming up with like a weird number like that to scare you. This is like pure science. Look, you can look it up. Some scientists have done studies that revealed that the human eye only sees 2% of reality. And we live in a world where what we see is truth. So we base our truth, our science, on those two percent and the 98 other percents because we can't see them we don't believe in them so we don't trust them or make choices based on them or or anything else which is kind of sad because two percent is really nothing <laughs> 
So, I mean, I, I know that if you're here, you're also listening to your intuition and trusting the invisible. And it's important because it's a huge part, the biggest part of our lives. And it's actually when we open to the unseen and we explore it that we start to learn a few things more. And the more we learn, the more we realize that we actually have no idea. As humans on this beautiful earth planet, we have no idea. We don't know anything about nothing. We like to think we do. It's true, it helps us be safe and healthy in our heads. But really, I think it's important to stay humble because we don't know. We try our best, for sure. But we also have to surrender to the unseen and what we don't know. And last but not least, little cherry on the cake. Life lesson number eight is about unconditional love. We say that love is one of the biggest lessons that we came here to learn on earth. And that life is about love. And there's just been an orb moving around me as I'm recording this on my podcast. And I can see it because I am recording my face. So I love that little synchronicity. We are surrounded by spirit guides as I'm sharing <laughs> lesson number eight. Unconditional love is more about saying no than yes. I'm going to repeat that. Unconditional love is more about saying no than yes. Because we think that unconditional love is about loving and accepting everything and everyone. And while part of that is true, you have to start with loving yourself unconditionally. Because the way you are going to love others is a reflection of how deeply you love yourself. Our relationship with others is a reflection of our relationship with ourselves. So that's also worth for others. The way other people treat you is the same way they treat themselves. So if people let you down, it's because they are letting themselves down. And knowing that helps to have a bit more compassion for those people and maybe to love them. But again, it's that same idea that acceptance is not just about saying, okay, I accept you and I'm okay with it. Acceptance is just about acknowledging. But then checking in with yourself, is this okay with me? Because it doesn't have to be. And that's why unconditional love is more about saying no than yes. Because you can say, I love you. I accept you. I have so much compassion for you. And I'm sending you my love, but this is not what I desire for me. So no, you can't talk to me like that. No, you can't behave with me like that. And no, I am not going to give myself that pain or allow that behavior in my life. Because unconditional love starts with yourself, accepting yourself, forgiving yourself, being compassionate with yourself. And sometimes that means tough love, discipline, devotion, boundaries, structure. Not just saying yes to everything. Sometimes it can be a silly example such as, do I want a bit more chocolate before going to bed? Well, no, because I love myself too much for that. Because I know I already had 200 grams of chocolate. And that extra little square is going to be too much for my health. It's not good for me. Love is not just bees and butterflies. Love is giving yourself the best.
And so that means also sometimes being afraid, being uncomfortable, crying. Sometimes you love yourself so much that you let some people go in your life. That you cry about past traumas. That you say no. And unconditional love is actually more about saying no than yes. Because the more you say no, the more you can say yes when things are really aligned and really light you up. Because it is your life that you're building. And you're the only one that knows when there's a true yes ringing inside of you. And it's important to honor that true yes. But if, if you've said yes to a million things and a million people and a million opportunities before, there's no room for the most aligned yes to vibrate, to happen, and to guide you. So unconditional love is more about saying no to yourself and to others than yes. Hmm. Well, these are my eight life lessons that I have learned so far. I'm curious to see in a few years time, maybe I'll do this again for my 40th birthday. Maybe I'll do 10 life lessons by then. I'm sure that I will have learned many other things by then. But let me know which of these lessons has really been resonating with you and is what you needed to hear in your life right now. I'm going to repeat them and then we can wrap up. So life lesson number one was it's your life. Lesson number two, fear only means expansion. Three, people judging you are only judging themselves. Life lesson number four, you don't find your purpose, you become more yourself. Life lesson five, accept what is without giving it meaning. Six, true power lies in allowing life to do its magic, to move through you, to support you, to be present around you. Seven, stay humble. You don't know shit. <laughs> Life lesson eight, unconditional love is more about saying no than yes. Many kisses to you. Thank you for inviting me in your private space. I hope these have been bringing some softness in your heart and these felt like words of wisdom for you. And I will see you next week in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>